So we are coming up to the end of the season and Bungie have just released the final exotic that many of you here may be fully aware of and eagerly waiting for. But for those that aren't familiar with it, it is the Traveller's Chosen Sidearm. This weapon from what I understand from everyone is that this is the best weapon to have for a neutral game build because of how its exotic work, where upon getting kills can land you the buff Gathering Light, which stacks up to times 10 but provides all ability energy to you depending on how much you have stacked plus also increases reload time as well and because of that it opens this weapon up to many many builds in game like no other honestly you can pair this weapon with any build in mind and it will just work so we're playing around with exotic and theory crafting as much as i could i've come up with my very own build that will allow you to cover many areas in terms of constant support damage and instant ability regen all from the side up is the first of many to come and has everything you want for a neutral build to use. So before we dive in, if you have any builds or things you would like me to cover, then by all means please do leave a comment in the comment section and I'll be sure to have a look at it and see what I can make of it. So starting things off, the subclass of choice we will be using is the Code of the Siegebreaker to make use of everything in an arsenal, but mainly the sunspots we create. Now, Bottom Tree Siegebreaker has always been the best neutral subclass to run when you want to either support others or use your abilities a lot without relying on mods or exotics. With this being the case, the pairing of the subclass with the sidearm makes it incredibly more flexible in putting out abilities as you go, as you have the mini version of the Halifire Heart on you. Making use of the Soul Invictus, Mortar Blast and Sun Warrior will provide a vast increase to our natural flow of abilities and in general will allow our sidearm exotic trait to kick in whenever we feel ready to, which is great as if we become buffed to fear our sunspots we not only get a 20% damage buff but thanks to the Sun Warrior perk we can also create more sunspots to pass through and thus endlessly have them on the go wherever we are. So like I said, a mini version of the Holofired Heart but better as it's more instant and there and then. Now combine this setup with the Phoenix Cradle Exotic for even longer duration plus team support and our neutral game has become even more useful to the point of endgame worthy. Of course with these solo spots active for keeping our abilities and health etc going you would think this would be too much of a overkill for ability regen. Well no actually the amount of energy you get back via staying in sunspots is a lot but only if you plan to stay in them and then it gradually increases as it goes on. Our plan is to not only make use of them by generating them, but really keeping ourselves on the go while doing so, as our sidearm has limited range and it's best to keep ourselves mobile so we can cover multiple areas while fully stocked and loaded. Now for your grenades, I would recommend you use the thermite grenades for their long lasting damage, coverage and duration in terms of taking out oncoming enemies. Incendiary grenades are also great for wide and quick damage as well, but have the downside to sometimes not sticking his targets unless you have a flat surface. For the weapons, it would be best to play with this sidearm strength as you will be utilising it a lot. Ideally, having a shotgun for close quarters would be your best bet, or better off, using a SMG with fast reload or auto in the holster can also be beneficial in waves based content. Now, with the travellers chosen in the primary slot, my role as a support focused character has been formed to partake in all activities of the player's choice and you honestly don't need to fully spec out your stats area as it can be easily covered by the exotic traits. The exotic trait in name, Gathering Light, allows the user to stat buffs of Gathering Light up to max of 10, which upon consuming them allows you to refill your abilities fully again. It also comes with a secondary effect of improving reload, handling and target acquisition thanks to the gift of the Traveller perk. All of this in a well-rounded weapon makes it suitable for our subclass and exotic armor of choice for the best of our abilities. This weapon also has probably the best stats for an exotic sidearm and most legendary sidearms in game and it does hit like a truck which is surprising as it is an adaptive frame which are more designed around reliability and sturdiness. But what you really need to know is that the weapon will be the key item to make the build pop off and it's very easy to achieve your goals with this attached. Secondary we have the Ecolos Shotgun with Distribution Break, Moving Target and Accurized Rounds. The perk on the weapon isn't the best for use in PvE content but that doesn't matter so much as I won't be using this too much in the higher tier content, mainly the low to mid tier content. The shotgun in general is a good weapon to use when combined with the sidearm as it has a higher stopping power and can strip shields down in a matter of seconds which for us is the main theme that the weapon will be highly used for. Now, the perk Distribution Break 
has the ability to provide a 10 second debuff onto enemies that have their shields broken, and also buffs all kinetic weapons to an extra 50% of extra damage against them. The idea I had here was that if I did went up against a shielded enemy and took their shield down with his weapon, I could then switch back to my sidearm and instantly down enemies within a few hits, rather than use up my ammo more, thus saving ammo in the meantime. Now combine this further with the Sunspot's 20% damage buff, or the surprise attack moth buff as well, and you can technically have a heavy weapon in your primary slot. Well, that's part of the idea, hopefully. Except from his benefits to the sidearm, the shotgun is pretty great for stopping major type enemies from advancing on me, but the perks for his third column could be a lot more better. And lastly, heavy wise, I've chosen the Berenger's Memory Grenade Launcher with Distribution Break, Quick Draw, and High Explosive Ordnance. Although not the best grenade launcher to pick up in game, the Berengers has started to grow on me and I found it useful for cleaning up large groups of ads chasing me, or using it in clustered areas to where my grenades can maximise the damage fully. Following through with buffing our sidearm strengths, I've gone with the distribution perk again to provide that large boost of damage against shielded enemies and use it mainly when up against majors or ultras that are based on the ground and are always moving towards me, such as the Hive Knights or Fallen Captains. Any in-air enemies I will face, I will use my shotgun instead. If there are no enemies with shields like I described, then I will use my heavy against bosses for DPS phases, but like I said, I won't be getting a lot of the DPS done against bosses as my perks aren't that focused around it. So hopefully I can rely more on my allies to do the most damage. Now for the stats, we can take it very easy here thanks to the Traveler's Chosen Sidearm covering all the areas that we need. As the exotic ability allows us to fully recover our abilities at an extremely fast rate, we can go ahead and put less focus on the armor stats and just focus in the main areas of survival. Ideally, focusing your stats in the recovery and resilience should be your top priority for surviving all counters. The rule of thumb here is to have 50 in resilience so you can survive an extra hit than normal, and 50 to above for the recovery stat so you can recover at a much faster rate and get back in action. As melee, grenade and class specialist abilities can be altered by TC, you can leave them wherever you want unless you plan to heavily build around a specific stat of your choice. This will now leave you with just the intelligent stat, and what you do here with it is entirely up to you. Next for the armor, you will need this season and last season's armor pieces for the mixture of mods we are going for. You will need two solar affinity pieces for warmind cells, one void affinity piece for the surprise attack mod, and one arc affinity piece for the swift charge mod. If you have the season pass, the armor provided are the best ones to work with as they come with high stats and 6 free armor slots for you to work with, with each one being fully customizable to your preferred choice of affinities. Exotics, as mentioned, we will be working with the Phoenix Cradle with Solar Affinity as nothing specific needs to be equipped in this mod slot. Now, with everything covered, here are the mods we will be using for the whole segment of the build. Head, Discipline, a special ammo finder mod, arm, resilience, sidearm loader and surprise attack mod, chest, recovery and swift charge mod, leg, recovery and primary ammo finder mod, mark, precursor dampener, enhanced bomber, distribution and wrath of Rasputin mod. So here's everything that you need for the build and to be quite honest you can mess around with the setup even more as most of the mods added allows you the freedom to do so. This is good as most of the builds I do have to follow a specific rule to make sure everything can be used within the set, one way or another. So as you have the freedom to further customize the build to your liking, what does the current build consist of and what can I do with it? The build we have going is going to focus entirely on supporting others and ourselves on a massive scale via the use of our abilities. Now the framework for the build is pretty simple as we just need to use Coda's Seed Breaker to make use of the Sunspots, and then Phoenix Cradle to extend the Sunspots further and then also use the Traveler's Chosen in conjunction with the Sunspots to buff our allies and ourselves at a consistent rate. That's the main basics that everyone can achieve. What follows now are the mods that can supplement the build further and make it highly effective in some higher tier content. With the use of the Warmind Cells mod, we can create plenty of Warmind Cells via our Solar Splash Damage mod and thus be able to lock down large areas with a singular explosion. As we are making use of our abilities, the Solar Splash Damage will always be achieved via our grenades, so we have plenty of them as we go. Alternatively, our shotgun also has the added effect of creating more cells depending on how many kills we get with it, which can be handy when our sidearm can't put in enough damage against tankier enemies. Now that's for covering a large area when things get too hectic, 
For more up close and personal encounters, I've added the Surprise Attack mod for a massive sidearm damage boost against all I face with the use of the Swift Attack mod. These two combos allows me to constantly use my sidearm 100% all the time with a constant damage boost fluctuating depending on how many enemies I can kill and get the Charge of Light mod active. This can be switched out if you wish for the higher energy fire mod for a 20% damage buff that goes out after you get a kill. Might be a bit more better for a consistent damage there and then. Now what we have from all of this in the end is a build that can provide a constant ability regen for our allies, wide scale buffs and debuffs for all, constant ability regen on the go, and a killer sidearm that can hit as hard as a heavy when the stars align. This is up there in terms of best support siege breaker builds to date, as the next best thing to build around this would be to use the Hollow Fire Heart instead of the Phoenix Cradle, but using that alternative might be a bit of an overkill considering how much ability regen you get when not using TC and when using Hollow Fire Heart just on the zone. What makes the build even more better is the fact that you don't need to stay within your sunspots to get the benefits of it. You can instead keep moving and get all of your abilities back whenever you feel like it, as long as you have the Gathering Light buff at a reliable level. The added on sunspot ability is just a bonus to help achieve your goals more, and the damage buff is really what you gain the most out of it. Can this build be improved on further? Yes, I gave you a few examples of things that can be changed if you're not happy with the version I have, and the Warmind cells can be changed to provide even more effective use if you simply swap out the Global Reach mod for something that could provide, say for example, wide scale health such as the Fireteam Medic mod. Or if you want to suppress enemies near you, then the Cellular Suppression mod is a nifty one to use instead. Remember, the customization doesn't end here, which is why I recommend you give this build specifically a go. You can tinker and tangle with it depending on activity you're playing in. And to be honest, you want to get a lot out of this for endgame and until beyond light. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.